السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا نیو ایپیسوڈ آف میڈیکل ریسرچ میڈ ایزی ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دیٹ ہاؤ ٹو اینالائز دی کو ہارٹ اسٹڈیز اینڈ واٹ از ریلیٹو رسک ان دا اسٹارٹ آئی ول ریکویسٹ دیٹ دوز ہو ہیو ناٹ سین آور پریویس ویڈیو آن دی بیسکس آف کو ہارٹ اسٹڈیز دے شوڈ فرسٹ سی دیٹ ویڈیو اینڈ آئی ول گیو دا لنک ان دا ڈسکرپشن ایز ویل So just to summarize, the cohorts are selected prior to the appearance of disease under investigation. Like if someone is investigating the role of smoking in lung carcinoma, the smokers not having the lung carcinoma will be selected as cohorts and then they will be followed up over time and the observations will be made. So basically the cohort studies, they proceed from cause to effect. So how to analyze the cohort studies? So basically the cohort studies are analyzed and the observations are made after the estimation of incidence rate of that disease under investigation among cohorts and controls if they are taken. And the risk is estimated and the estimation of risk in cohort studies is mainly estimated by the relative risk. So now let us see by a hypothetical example that how to estimate the incidence rate in the cohort studies. Here I will again request that those who have not seen our previous video on the incidence and prevalence, they should first see that video and I will give the link in the description as well so that they can have the basic knowledge and concept of incidence and prevalence. So in this example, the 7,000 people are selected as cohort who are smokers and not having the lung carcinoma at the time of selection. Then that cohort is followed up for 20 years and after 20 years it was found that 70 of those smokers they developed lung carcinoma while 6930 they did not. So to calculate the incidence rate among smokers the number of new cases that is 70 is divided by the total population at risk that is 7000 and multiplied by 1000. The answer is 10 per 1000. So the incidence rate among smokers of having lung carcinoma is 10 per 1000. So now let us calculate the incidence rate of lung carcinoma among non-smokers. In this example, same number of controls who do not smoke, they were selected as controls. So the 7000 controls who were non-smokers, they were followed for 20 years and after 20 years it was observed that 7 of the non-smokers, they developed lung carcinoma while 6993 they did not. So the incidence rate among non-smokers of having lung carcinoma is total number of new cases that is 7 divided by the Population at risk that is 7000 and multiplied by 1000. The answer is 1 per 1000. So, just to summarize, in our example, the incidence rate of lung carcinoma among smokers is 10 per 1000, while the incidence rate of lung carcinoma among non smokers is 1 per 1000. From, from, from this example, you can appreciate that the incidence rate of lung carcinoma among smokers is quite high as compared to the non-smokers. So how to define the relative risk? It is the measure of the risk of a certain event like lung carcinoma in our example among cohorts who were smokers compared to the risk of that same event that is lung carcinoma among non-smokers who were the controls. So how to calculate the relative risk? It is calculated by the following formula. The incidence of disease among exposed group, that is the smoker, divided by the incidence of disease among non-exposed, that were the non-smokers. So it was in our example 10 divided by 1 is equal to 10. So the relative risk in our example is 10. So now how to interpret this relative risk? So remember that if the relative risk is 1, it shows no association between the supposed causal factor and the outcome, that is the lung carcinoma and the smoking in our case. 
a relative risk of two indicates that the disease is two times more common among exposed than the non-exposed group. The greater the relative risk, the more is the strength of association between the supposed causal factor and the disease. So as you saw that in our example, the relative risk was 10. So we can say that smokers are 10 times more prone to have lung carcinoma than non-smokers. So now let us see what are the advantages of the cohort studies. The incidence rate can be calculated, the relative risk can be calculated and the cohort studies overall are less biased than the case control studies. The disadvantages are, are that a large sample of patients or controls is required and a long duration of time is usually involved because the patients are the cohorts are followed up for a long period of time and so many patients they will lose to follow up and the many researchers they may also lose to follow up. Another disadvantage of cohort studies is that the cohort studies cannot be applied on the rare diseases because the incidence will be very low and it will be, it will be difficult to get the required results. So thank you very much. That's all for today. In the next video, we will inshallah bring a new topic.